In the 2023 MLB season, we saw some players have breakout seasons out of nowhere. Ha Sung Kim became one of the most reliable players in the league, as he increased his on-base percentage while generating more power and providing highlight reel defense on a daily basis. Nolan Jones became a star for the Rockies after years of being a top 100 prospect in MLB for the Guardians, hitting 20 home runs in 106 games while posting an OPS over 900. JP Crawford finally lived up to his former top 10 prospect in MLB status, leading the American League in walks while raising his slugging percentage by 100 points. After thinking about how much these players improved, I figured I would predict which players will have breakout seasons in 2024. Before compiling a list of 10 solid candidates, there has to be some restrictions on how I'm choosing players. For one, I'm not going to choose any top prospect who have yet to debut or barely scratched the surface last season. That's like if I predicted Corbin Carroll to have a breakout season last year. No one is shocked that he's very good. He literally was a top 3 prospect in all baseball. There's no point in making a video on how Jackson Holiday or Paul Skeens will break out in 2024, because everyone knows how good they'll be. This video is more meant to predict the next crop of players to have breakout seasons like Yanir Cano, Kyle Bradley, and Justin Steele. Now that I've laid out the type of players I'm going to be choosing today, let's get into the video. Starting off, I'm taking Jared Kelenic of the Atlanta Braves. In 2021, Jared Kelenic was the number four prospect in all baseball in the Seattle Mariners organization, right ahead of teammate Julio Rodriguez. While J-Rod would go on to be a superstar out of the gates in 2022, Kelenic mightily struggled in Seattle. In 147 games in 2021 and 2022, he hit 20 home runs while posting a terrible 589 OPS and accumulating negative 2 B-War. Fortunately for Kelenic, he put up some decent numbers in in 2023. On the season in 105 total games, he had 11 home runs while posting an OPS of 746 and accumulating 2B war on the season. While his numbers did improve in 2023, the Mariners decided to cut ties with him as they shipped him and Marco Gonzalez to the Atlanta Braves last month. I think this move to Atlanta will do wonders for Kelenic. For one, he badly needed a fresh start. It was clear that things just weren't working out for him in Seattle, and a change of scenery was necessary for him to turn his career around. The Braves seem like a perfect fit for me. Over the past few seasons, they've signed and acquired players who improved their offensive stats a lot by coming over to Atlanta. Matt Olson increased his OPS from 911 with the A's in 2021 to 993 with the Braves in 2023. Orlando Arcia went from almost being out of the league with the Brewers in 2019 after having an OPS of 633 to joining the Braves and having his best season in 2023 where he had an OPS of 741 and made the All-Star team. Sean Murphy had a 759 OPS with the A's in 2022 and an 844 OPS with the Braves in 2023. All of these players were at different points in their career before coming to the Braves, while all at different levels of talent at the time. Not to mention, according to Baseball Savant, hard-hit batted balls traveled an average of 6.6 .6 feet further in Atlanta in 2023 as a result of the temperature, elevation, and humidity. On the other hand, hard-hit batted balls traveled an average of 1.8 feet less in Seattle in 2023 as a result of those same factors. For all of these reasons, I think Kelenic has a breakout year in 2024. I'm not saying he's going to be a superstar, but I definitely think he can be a quality, above-average outfielder going forward. Next up, I'm picking Gregory Santos of the Chicago White Sox. A lot of you watching have never heard of Santos before, but I picked him as the most underrated player on the White Sox a month ago and like him a lot heading into 2024. After only pitching in 5 games for the Giants in 2021 and 2022, they shipped him to the White Sox in a trade that basically went unnoticed. Santos was never a top prospect for the Giants and wasn't expected to have a major role in Chicago. With the White Sox 2023 season being a disaster from the start, Santos was able to get some solid innings in. In 60 outings and 66 and a third innings out of the bullpen, he put up a 3.39 ERA and 1.3 whip while striking out 66 batters. While the ERA looks pretty good, the whip is definitely higher than he wanted it to be. However, a big reason for this is because of how bad the White Sox defense was last season. The White Sox posted negative 59 defensive runs saved above average in 2023, second worst in the league to the A's. Taking a look at Santos's advanced stats, he's a great relief pitcher and was really unlucky. His batting average against was 13 points higher than it was expected to be, and his ERA was 28 points higher than it was expected to be. Being in the 100th percentile in barrel percentage is incredible. Out of 201 batted balls that he generated, only 3 were hit over 98 miles per hour off the bat at a perfect launch angle. Now let's get to why I expect him to break out in 2024. With the White Sox having one of the worst defenses in the league last season, they were determined to improve that area in the offseason. They've already done a great job at addressing that need by signing Paul DeYoung and trading for Nicky Lopez, both of whom put up 9 outs above average in 2023. They are also replacing Yasmani Grandal, the worst defensive catcher in the league, with Martin Maldonado, an above average defensive catcher. All three of these players will help all the White Sox pitchers in 2024, including Santos. With a better defense behind him and another year under his belt, I think Santos will be one of the best relief pitchers in baseball in 2024. Up next, I'm going with CJ Abrams of the Washington Nationals. Abrams was drafted by the San Diego Padres with the 6th pick in the 2019 draft and rose to the number 8 overall prospect in baseball in 2021 and the number 9 overall prospect in 2022. He was a great contact hitter 
with great speed in the minor leagues, but he basically had zero power. In 114 minor league games, he had 12 home runs, 33 doubles, 42 stolen bases, and an OPS of 896. At the 2022 trade deadline, the Padres decided to trade all of their top prospects, including Abrams, to the Nationals in exchange for Juan Soto. The Padres already had Ha Sung Kim and Fernando Tatis Jr. up the middle at the time, and went on to sign Xander Bogarts the next offseason, so they felt like they could manage the loss of a talented player like Abrams. After the trade deadline, Abrams got a cup of coffee in the majors with the Nationals, but he didn't do too much. In 44 games, he only posted an OPS of 603. While this was slightly concerning, the Nationals gave the green light for Abrams to be their full-time shortstop in 2023. Washington is a great situation for him because there isn't any pressure for the team to be competitive at the moment. In his first full big league season, Abrams was decent. In 151 games, he hit 18 home runs while stealing 47 bases and posting an OPS of 712. On the season, he accumulated a respectable 3.4 B war. I think Abrams is going to have a much better 2024 season. In 2023, it was clear he got a lot stronger and grew into his body more. His barrel percentage and hard hit percentage both grew significantly since his major league stint in 2022. Not to mention, I don't think anyone saw him hitting 18 home runs in 2023. That level of power shows me that his arms are getting stronger. I'm specifically mentioning his arms here because his arm strength on defense did not improve at all in 2023. He produced negative outs above average on the season, and a large reason for that is because his arm strength wasn't all there. In order for him to keep being a productive major league shortstop, he has to be better defensively, and I think he will be. Like I previously said, he's in a zero pressure situation in Washington, where the team is expected to finish fifth in the NL East again. I really like Abrams and have a solid 2024 season. Next up, I'm taking Brandon Fott of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Most of you recognize Fott due to his awesome some playoff run for the D-backs, but I bet a lot of you didn't realize how much he struggled in the regular season. Heading into 2023, Fott was ranked as the 59th best prospect in baseball and was the D-backs number two prospect behind Corbin Carroll. From the end of the 2022 minor league season to his time in the minors in 2023, Fott only played for the D-backs AAA team where his stock rose a lot. In 22 total starts in AAA, he had a 3.16 ERA and 1.11 whip with 143 strikeouts and 122 innings. Due to his success at the highest minor league level, Fott eventually rose to the 21st ranked prospect in all baseball in July 2023. Before this, however, he made two stints in the major leagues this past May and June, where he really struggled. In his first six starts, he gave up 28 earned runs and 25 and two-thirds innings. However, he got caught up to the D-backs for a third time at the end of July and stayed there for the rest of the season. In his final 13 starts of the season, he only gave up 30 three earned runs in 70 and a third innings, helping the D-backs earn the last wildcard spot in the National League. His performance towards the end of the regular season earned him a spot in the D-backs playoff starting rotation. He ended up starting five playoff games, where he posted a 3.27 ERA in 22 innings against some of the best lineups in all baseball. Now that Fa has a secure spot in the D-backs starting rotation heading into 2024, I think he's really going to break out. Do not be deceived by his 5.72 ERA and 1.41 whip in the regular season. From July onwards, he is one of the best pitchers in all baseball. He's only 25 years old and will get to to work with great pitchers like Zach Gallen, Merrill Kelly, and Eduardo Rodriguez for years to come. Buy stock on Brandon Fott as soon as possible. Up next, I'm picking Vinny Pasquantino of the Kansas City Royals. Unlike some of these names on the list, Pasquantino was never really a top prospect. Going into 2022, MLB.com ranked him as the Royals' number 17 ranked prospect. They drafted him in the 11th round of the 2019 draft, and there were never huge expectations for him. He absolutely raked at every level he played at in the minor leagues. From 2019 to 2022, he played at least 50 games for the Royals' rookie ball, single AA, AA, and AAA teams, and he posted an OPS over 900 with ridiculous power at every level. After posting a 931 OPS in 73 games at AAA in 2022, the Royals caught him up to the major leagues and he was pretty solid. In 72 games in the majors, he had 10 home runs and 10 doubles while posting an OPS of 832. These great numbers led to him earning an everyday job for the Royals in 2023. He got off to a pretty good start before tearing a labrum in his right shoulder, forcing him to undergo season-ending surgery in mid-June. In 61 games on the season, he hit 9 home runs and 17 doubles while posting an OPS of 762. Heading into 2024, Pasquantino is fully recovered from his shoulder surgery, and I think he's primed for a big season. He's hit for power and average at every level in the Royals organization, and with a fully repaired shoulder, I think he can hit 30 home runs this season. I look at what Corey Seager has done coming off of his shoulder surgery, and he clearly hasn't lost a beat. I'm not comparing Pasquantino to Seager at all, as they're completely different players, but I don't expect his injury to have an effect on his development going forward. I think he'll be great for the Royals in 2024. Next up, I'm going with Brian Wu of the Seattle Mariners. Wu was taken by the Mariners in the 6th round of the 2021 draft out of Cal Poly. In his final year at Cal Poly, he only pitched 28 innings before needing to undergo Tommy John surgery. He made his pro debut in rookie ball in July 2022 before finishing the season in high A ball. Heading into 2023, Wu was ranked as the Mariners' 5th best prospect, but never managed to crack an MLB Top 100 prospect list. He started the season in Double A, where he posted a 2.05 ERA and .89 whip in 9 starts. Due to injuries to Robbie Ray and Marco Gonzalez, 
this, the Mariners called up Wu on June 2nd to make his Major League debut. He ended up staying with the Mariners for the remainder of the regular season, where he made 18 starts. In 87 and two-thirds innings in the Major Leagues, he posted a 4.21 ERA and 1.21 whip, all while striking out 93 batters. Overall, Wu was pretty good for the Mariners in his rookie season, and a lot better than his numbers show. Taking a look at baseball savant's peripherals, he's in a high percentile in a lot of important categories, like hard hit percentage and whiff percentage. Obviously, the most glaring stat there is the expected ERA of 3.45, while his actual ERA was 4.21. This means that Wu was incredibly unlucky, and should have had a much lower ERA than he actually had. His expected batting average was 8 points lower than his actual and his expected slugging percentage was 45 points lower than his actual. According to StatCast, T-Mobile Park has been the most pitcher-friendly stadium in MLB over the past three years. With all this in mind and Wu having a safe spot in the Mariners rotation for now, I like his chances at having a breakout season. Staying with the Seattle Mariners, I'm taking Dominic Canzone. Canzone was drafted by the D-backs in the 8th round of the 2019 draft and is an absolute hitting machine. In 2019 in rookie and low A-ball, he hit 8 home runs and 19 doubles in 46 games while posting an 853 OPS. In 2021, Canzone played in 79 games in high A-ball and double A, where he hit 14 home runs and 16 doubles with an OPS of 897. In 2022, he played in 106 games in double A and triple A, where he hit 22 home runs and 25 doubles with an OPS of 908. If I'm sounding a bit repetitive, I'm really trying to emphasize that he's raked at every minor league level. 2023 was Canzone's best year as a pro for sure. He played in 71 games in AAA where he had 16 home runs and 18 doubles while posting a whopping 1.065 OPS and driving in 71 runs. By this time, the D-backs knew he was simply too good for the minor league, so they decided to call him up to the big leagues on July 7th. He was only the D-backs number 19 ranked prospect at the time, so he wasn't expected to do too much for the club at the major league level. After playing only 15 games for the D-backs while posting an OPS of 661, they traded him to the Seattle Mariners along with Josh Rojas in exchange for closer Paul Sewald. Canzone spent the rest of the season in the majors for the Mariners, hitting 5 5 home runs and 11 doubles in 44 games while posting an OPS of 656. Now that we're inching closer to the 2024 season, I think Canzone has an awesome opportunity to put up solid numbers in the major leagues for the Mariners. I love his swing and that leg kick he has, and think the success from the minor leagues will translate a lot to the majors. Looking at his 2023 hit chart, he's pulled the ball to right field a lot, which should help him given he's playing in Seattle where center field and the gaps are farther than they are at other stadiums. I'm super confident that Canzone surprises a lot of people in 2024. Next up, I'm picking Brian Bayo of the Boston Red Sox. While the Red Sox have been at the bottom of the AL East the past few seasons, Bayo has been one of the bright spots. They signed him as an international free agent in 2017, and he slowly rose through the minor league system. 2022 was his best season in the minor leagues as he posted a 2.34 ERA and 1.04 whip in 17 starts in AA and AAA. By this time, Bayo jumped up to the Red Sox number 3 ranked prospect and as high as the 24th best prospect in all of baseball. He got caught up to the majors on July 6th and he stayed in the Red Sox rotation the rest of the season. In 13 starts in the majors, he posted a high 4.71 ERA but a solid 2.94 FIP in 57 and 2 thirds innings. In his sophomore season, he was easily the ace of the Red Sox pitching staff. In 28 starts and 157 innings, he posted a 4.24 ERA and 1.34 whip. While those numbers are just okay, Bayo accumulated 3.1 B-War on the season, which is absolutely fantastic. There are a few reasons why I think Bayo will take another step forward in 2024. This past season, his changeup was by far his best pitch. Opposing batters hit 196 against the pitch and had an expected batting average of 171. I think this is definitely sustainable because he loves living low in the strike zone and gets a ton of ground balls and weak contact. Outside of his changeup, he hasn't generated many swings and misses. His next best pitch is his sinker, the pitch he throws the most at about 40% of the time. However, hitters are hitting 278 off of it and hit over 300 against his four-seam fastball and curveball. While those numbers are very high, there's a lot of room for improvement. Once he learns to locate his pitches besides his changeup better, all of his stats will gradually improve. I'm really excited to see what Bale does this upcoming season. Up next, I'm going with Patrick Bailey of the San Francisco Giants. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm a big fan of Patrick Bailey. The Giants drafted Bailey with a 13th overall pick in the 2020 draft, as he and Joey Bart were meant to be the heirs to Buster Posey. In his first minor league season in 2021, he put up a 795 OPS in 82 games across rookie ball and high A ball. While Bailey's biggest strength has always been his glove, these offensive numbers were a bit disappointing to the Giants. In 2022, he spent 83 games in high A ball where he put up a 761 OPS. He played 28 games in AA and AAA in 2023 before getting caught up to the majors as a result of Joey Bart's struggles. He stayed up with the Giants from May onwards and played in 97 games. In his rookie campaign, he hit 7 home runs and 18 doubles while posting an OPS of 644. Offensively, Bailey was pretty unlucky as his peripherals were pretty solid. His expected slug 
shooting percentage was 61 points higher than what it actually was, and his expected batting average was 16 points higher than what it actually was. As I previously mentioned, his strong point is his defense. He's the best catcher at framing in the league, has one of the fastest pop times, and is really good at throwing runners out. In 2024, if he can get his OPS up to around 750, which I think is pretty reasonable, I think he has the potential to be an all-star. I don't expect him to be the offensive player Buster Posey once was, but as his offensive game improves going forward, I think he can be a top 10 catcher in baseball in 2024. The last player I'm predicting to have a breakout season is Taj Bradley of the Tampa Bay Rays. Out of all the players on the list, Bradley is the one player that is the closest to a top tier prospect over the past few seasons. While he was drafted in 2019, his rise to being a solid prospect really started in 2021. He spent this year in A ball and high A, starting 22 games while posting a 1.83 ERA and .93 whip in 103 innings. By the start of the 2022 season, Bradley rose to the number 33 prospect on MLB.com's top 100 list. He kept working through the minor leagues in 2022, posting a 2.57 ERA and 1.0 for whip and 28 starts. Due to an injury to Zach Eflin, Bradley got the call to the major leagues in April 2023. He made three different trips to the Rays in 2023, and it seems like he struggled on the surface. In 21 starts, he had a 5.59 ERA and 1.39 whip while striking out 129 batters in 104 innings. I mentioned that it seemed like he struggled on the surface because his advanced stats show that he was pretty good. While his ERA in the season was 5.59, his expected ERA was 4.45. That's a full one run differential between his actual and expected ERA. Only four pitchers in MLB who generated at least two 250 balls in play had a larger difference in that category. I think there's a lot to like about Bradley heading into 2024. Baseball Savant compares the movement on his pitches to those of Justin Verlander, Dylan Cease, and Garrett Cole in 2023. He had a pretty high strikeout rate and was right in the middle of the pack on most expected stats. Don't write him off based on that high ERA because I guarantee you there are already people out there saying he sucks because of that. The Rays pitching lab is legit as ever and I think Bradley puts up a very solid 2024 campaign. That's gonna do it for the video. Sorry for not uploading last weekend. I battled the flu and my voice just wasn't there. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Comment down below what other players you think will break out in 2024. Check out my other socials in the description and I'll see you in the next video.